let's see. Oh, shoot. Okay. I'm live. What's up, class? What's up, class? How y'all doing? Got my new little setup here. Got my new little setup here. Okay, let me just mute that. Okay. Bear with me. Starting a little early. Hey, Mona. How are you? How's everything going? All right. Susan, how you doing, Susan? Today's lesson is going to be on how to do velocity banking with credit cards. Because lately, a lot of my clients uh, don't have a line of credit just yet, you know, or don't have the HELOC that they're looking for, or maybe you got denied trying to get a line of credit because your utilization is too high. A lot of different issues, but most of you have credit cards. So I wanted to do today's lesson strictly on the use of credit cards, how we use it for velocity banking, how to manage multiple different credit cards, and really how to decide which credit card we're going to use to pay off debt, to increase cash flow, to lower your expenses, and raise your credit score, all using your own income so that we can get to that line of credit, that big HELOC that you want, or that big personal line of credit, that big business line of credit, so that we can really just demolish debt at a fast rate. Oh, hey, David, I, I forgot. Yeah, you're under your wife's name. And uh, what's up, Daryl from California? How are you? How's everything going? All right, shall we begin? This is live. This is cool. I, I, did, I did a live the other day, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to do live streams. It's so much easier. I can interact with you a lot better. It uploads way faster than me pre-recording. So I'm like, let me just do some live streams. Let's see how this goes. All right, so on the board, I'm going to use credit cards that I have personally that I'm using. Okay, and I'm just going to give you an example of one specific credit card that I've used consistently to uh, pay off debts, pay off other credit cards, or just use the credit card to increase my cash a little bit or to just buy me some time. All right, so uh, going like four months back around like, I, I don't know, like October, no, yeah, like uh, August-ish, September, I was making somewhere around here. And here were my expenses, and I had like, I was at around like 20K plus debt. But now I'm at like 12 or 10, so I'm always gonna be done. And I've always had like about cash flow of 500. And I've got this one credit card from Bank of America. It's the red one, Cash Rewards. It's got a credit line of 5K, all right? There's some important dates that we need to know, all right, which is your due date, your closing date, okay? These are very important dates that we need to know, all right? So for my credit card, my due date is always due on the 6th, but my closing date is on the 9th, and I usually typically always have like a minimum payment of like 25 bucks, but depending on how much I owe, it could go up to like maybe as high as 50, all right? Now... The other thing we need to know when we're using credit cards is you definitely need to know what your minimum payment typically is, but what's more important is the statement balance, okay? Because when we're doing velocity banking, what can happen is you're using the card to pay your bills, right? Bum, 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 you're paying your bills, okay? Now, if you wanna be a little slick, which something that I do all the time is I pay attention to my closing date. So I look at, you know, when I'm working with people, right? How I always say, look, get, get all your numbers down, know where all your money is going, right? So I'm just like, you know, just fill this in for yourself when you're, when you're 
taking notes, which you should always be taking notes when you watch my videos, always. What's up, Joel? What's up, Boxing? Uh, Villar, Villa Miller, Adrian Gonzalez, how are you? Right? Just saying what's up, all right? Um, I'll definitely have this pre-recorded, so if you come in late, it's all right. Don't worry. Anyways, let's assume that all these bills right here, I can pay with a credit card. Food, gas, miscellaneous, subscriptions, you know, the Netflix, the Hulu, the this, your phone bill, your internet, your cable, car insurance, and electric bill. I know some people can't, some people can. For me, I can, all right? Now, I would say I was running anywhere from like as high as like a thousand of expenses totally on this one card right now what I would do is let's say my bill or your bill usually is like on the I don't know the fifth and then you have a car insurance on due on the first cable due on the eighth right electric on the fourth it's all over the place right well instead of doing that what I did was I looked at all my bills and I called all the companies to set up all my due dates for my monthly bills that always go out after the closing date okay what this did for me was buy me time for my cash flow so that I could make chunk payments towards other debts to increase my cash flow right so you know when we're first looking at the velocity banking concept I know like I said there's a lot of you especially some of my like tier three clients even where you know you're making good money you got high expenses you have minimal cash flow you know it's like under a thousand under 500 even and the problem is you can't get the debt weapon you can't get the line of credits difficult right because your utilization is high but to get us in the right direction to position us right we can use some credit cards all right so here's what I did I moved all my monthly due dates after the 9th so the 10th or after and what that is going to do is buy me literally like an extra 30 days on top of the already due date of the next bill for this credit card right so let's say between December 1st and up until the due date of January 6th, I use a thousand bucks, okay? Now, to avoid owing the thousand on January 6th, what do I do? I wait till December 10th and after to run all of these bills, right? So what ends up happening is usually I'm able to have like maybe seven to like eight hundred dollars pushed to February's statement February's due date and what does that do I'm able to keep more cash flow number one it buys me more time and it allows me to build my credit even more because the usually and I could be wrong about this but with when the credit card company reports your uh you know your balance to the bureaus it, you know when they submit the the credit score or whatever for each and every month what i've noticed especially with bank of america with the with the fico score that they give you or with any bank that you're with every time it they usually produce the credit report after the closing date so i'm like hmm all right if that's the case and if i didn't use the credit card before the closing date then it's gonna look like I have less money owed on the credit card maybe I only ran about two to three hundred dollars from the first of the month till about the ninth right that's usually what I try to do I try to push all my bills after my closing date right so by the time I actually have to pay the bill I'm going to have 500 cash flow for December, 500 cash flow for January, and then going into February, I'm literally paying back money I used in December. 
so you can agree with me that you're going to get paid monthly, bi-weekly, weekly, like four to six paychecks, right? All of December, all of January, buys us time, okay? And it also helps your credit because it's not really showing that you owe all this money on the credit card, all right? So those are some uh, unique ways that we can create some extra cash flow or at least just buy us time, all right? Now, to step into what most of you face, because the next question is, well, Denzel, what if I maxed out on my credit card? I'm going to look at you with three heads. So why are you maxed out? Like, what are we doing? We got to get our money right. Like I, like I always say, right? So in that case, if, I ha if I'm maxed out on the credit card, then typically your monthly payment might be a lot higher than 50 bucks, right? So if I, if I owe um, 5,000 on this credit card, let's just say, let's just say I owe 5,000 on the credit card, right? And my monthly payment is like 150 bucks. Okay, so if it's 150 bucks and, you know, let's say we have cash flow of like 500 or less. All right. Well, the idea is to do the same exact thing. Get your list of all the bills that I can run with credit. Right. All the bills I can run with credit. Get those numbers out. Push the due dates past your closing date. All right. And when you get paid, before you use your cash to pay these bills, right? Before you use your cash to pay any of these bills, make a payment towards the credit card like the day before or even the day of that the bill is due. So for me, you know, I got a phone bill of 150. I've got some subscriptions, 50 bucks here. Um, my parents pay internet now. Mom pays the car insurance and the cable and the electric. But what we do is they funnel, sometimes when they can't afford it, they, f they funnel the bill to my credit card and then they just pay me back like 30 days or a couple days later. So, you know, let's just say it's like, you know, 500 to 700 bucks that you have. In, in, in bills total, right? When each one is due, all I'm simply saying is, is you, you've got paid. You got paid, right? And your bill is due. But you have a maxed out credit card, all right? And you have this high payment on the credit card, so it always seems like, well, I can only pay the minimum payment, Denzel. Hear me out, ready? Take that bill, whatever, even if it's individual, like you're individually making payments, like multiple payments towards a credit card throughout the month, what you do is you immediately satisfy the month's payment if you make a payment via your expense, expenses that you had. So instead of using your cash, we pay the phone bill. Let's just say, let's just focus on the phone bill for a second, All right? Your phone bill's due tomorrow, okay? You got paid today. Instead of using your cash to pay tomorrow's bill, right? Let's make a payment towards the credit card for the 150 and then use the credit card to pay the bill. Okay? You do that each and every time throughout the whole entire month. And what you're going to notice is you're going to have an increased cash flow of that monthly payment because that money stayed in there. It actually, it offset it for that month. And then when you receive any and extra cash flow after all bills are paid, guess where you dump it? Into the credit card. So instead of letting that money sit in the checking, in the savings, instead of investing money or trying to put it in your 401k, right? Cut all that crap out, all right? You're paying through your teeth on interest. All right? I can make you way more money just by paying off of your debts than your passive investing, okay? And we get the results that we want to get, 
right? So I hope that helps. I hope that's pretty clear. And I'm going to dive into some Q&A. Okay, so let's see who's got some questions so far on that. Anything that you're confused about? Does it make sense? Do you think I'm crazy in the head? What? Let me know. Brittany says, can you do a video on how to pay rent with credit cards? I'm having trouble setting that up. Okay. Every state, every company, every credit card, every bank is different. Some companies, you can pay your, let's say your rent payments, maybe even your mortgage, maybe your car payment. For some people, you're able to run that as an expense to your credit card. So for Brittany, in this case, it seems like you can't pay your rent with a credit card. All right. So in that case, what do we do? All right. Same thing. All right. We, we, we look at all of our expenses. We say, well, what can I pay? What can I pay with credit? And what can I not pay with credit? Whatever you cannot pay with credit stays in cash. All right? Cash bills. All right? We're simply trying to build our credit score. I'm not trying to run all of your bills through one credit card because what's going to happen is you have to pay that 3%, you know, balance transfer fee. Okay? And that's every single time that you make a balance transfer. All right. Please do not get confused with other channels that talk about velocity banking with a credit card to pay off your mortgage. I don't know how the hell they do that. I think maybe they don't know. Maybe they get confused with the different terminology because, you know, when when you say line of credit, it can mean multiple of things. It can mean a credit card. It can mean a personal line of credit, it can mean a life insurance policy, it can mean a HELOC, right? Many different terminologies. Just try not to get confused when you're, when you're watching other channels because I've had a lot of people ask me, they're like, how do I pay my, you know, my cash bills with credit card? And I'm like, I don't like to do that because it costs me too much money. Even if I use a company like Plastic, you know, or them different, them different companies where, you know, they allow you to pay your bill with a credit card, but still they charge you a fee. If you do the math, it may not add up. It might be a short term thing to do. I think that's okay of an option, but definitely, definitely not a long term. The long term is let's build your credit. Let's wipe out the credit cards, get rid of those things first, because those, those high utilizations, they, they hurt your credit so bad, right? So let's get those credit cards paid down one by one by one, okay? And when you're choosing which credit card, because I know some people, some of you've got like five, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve different credit cards, and I'm looking at you with three heads, right? Like, why do you need so many different credit cards, okay? And in that case, they're all maxed out, right? For some of you, let's just say. A lot of you got, you know, a lot of credit cards are maxed out or they're, they're high in the balance. They're over 50%. In those cases, I, I'm, what I'm looking for is which credit card are you paying the most on the minimum payment, number one, because that's going to indicate immediate cash flow that I can get to, right? And then what I'm looking at is, all right, are you using this credit card for, you know, wife expense? for her hair and the makeup and the da 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 and then are using this credit card to do some side hustle work and uh, to pay for your business and then are using this credit card to pay the miscellaneous, no, don't do all that. Funnel everything to one card that we can use consistently until that balance is all the way to zero and then we transition to the next card and do it again and then transition to the next card and you keep doing it, keep doing it, all right? Um, let's see. So I hope that helped, Brittany. In that case, you really can't always use the credit card for everything, which is why I always like to get that, that line of credit where I can use everything. Q 
Can you set up your line of credit to pay your credit card statements so your cash stays in the line of credit? Yes. I like that, Joel. That's if you want to be even more slick. All right. So because I know I got slick, slick people, my slick subscribers. OK, you guys are real slick. You're like, this. what if I do this? If I do this with this with this, what happens? All right. I drew it for you already. So this is for Joel. All right. Which is, he's saying, if I have a line of credit and I have credit cards and I'm using the credit card first, because as you know, once you have that line of credit, okay, that personal line of credit, the day you pull money out is the day you start paying interest, okay? That might seem like a disadvantage. It's not. But... If you want to take a little extra time, a little extra move, is you can continue to use the credit cards or credit card one at a time and use that to pay most of your bills. And what's nice with the credit cards is the day you use it, you don't actually pay interest on it until the due date, okay? Which is whatever you owe off the statement balance, right? So look, you and I both make money somehow, some way, shape or form. It goes into the checking account immediately whenever someone gets paid, all right? Before using this cash money, okay, to pay your bills, use the credit card to pay most of your day-to-day -day stuff, okay? As soon as you use that credit card, you're going to produce a due date. All right. It's going to say, hey, you know, you, you owe us this much on this date once you've passed the closing date. All right. So you're using the card throughout the month. Now, let's say Joel, for my friend Joel, he has a line of credit for however much. And he wants to chunk at a debt. Now, obviously over here, I wrote a policy or real estate to, to invest because that's usually the idea. But when we're in the process of paying off debt, this top portion should be looked at as debts. Okay. Debts that we're trying to pay off to increase what? The cash flow so that we can uh, acquire real estate, create profits, acquire life insurance policy, start saving money, all those good things. All right, so let's say Joel takes the line of credit, makes a chunk payment of whatever amount towards a specific debt, right? And he just increased his cash flow, okay? Now, he still has his money here, okay? Before he pays the credit card, what can he do? He can put all this money in the line of credit okay now two three four weeks from now we're gonna owe whatever we used in expenses for that credit card yes all right he zeroed out the line of credit from his income initially if he didn't zero it out he, he definitely lowered the balance quite a bit okay and instead of using the line of credit every single day, like I always say, to pull the money in, take the money out, put the money in, take the money out, he can literally wait towards the end of the month when that credit card is due and just pay the statement balance from the line of credit and what happens over those two to three weeks. My buddy Joel gets paid again. So as soon as he takes that money out, boom, puts it right back in. Pays no interest over here, pays no interest over here, creates cash flow. He starts doing salsa. He starts dancing with the wife. He takes her out and, and we have some fun, right? And, and we get that free in a very short period of time. All right. Next question. So I hope that was, I hope that's clear, Joel. Hope that helps. All right, I have multiple credit cards. Should I use the available credit as my debt weapon or get a personal line of credit to pay them all at once? 
I kind of like the, the second part a little bit better, right? And this depends on your cash flow. Right here, these four numbers are so important when I'm working with people one-on-one. -on -one. That's what I'm trying to solve for. That's what will make me answer that question is if I have good income, good cash flow, your expenses are not too high, and I can do something like that where I can like get that personal line of credit and just like chunk at everything, right? And be like, boom, 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 pay it all off, boom, cash flow, come right back to me, dump all the money right back in the line of credit and start the process, okay? Let's see. Is Velocity Banking possible before you hit 20% equity on a house? I wanna say yes. It depends on that bank, on that credit union, on that, you know, that, that company. But typically that's the, that's what they look for is they want to see 20% equity in the, in the home first before, um, let's see, let's say in one month due to job, business, illness, et cetera, there's negative cash flow. What do you pay first? Good question. Good question. I had the same issue when I got fired at my job before I started this channel. Okay, so what did I do? As soon as I got fired, I went straight to the bank and I applied for an increase on my line of credit. I had five grand. Okay, I went straight to the bank and I said, hey, help me out. Help me out. What can you do for me? All right. Got an increase, went from five to 10K. If my expenses are 2,500, that just bought me two months to figure something out, whether it was get another job or do what we're doing right now together, right? Helping families all day long, moms clear their debts out and people get their finances in order and people are learning their kingdom authority through giving and receiving, all right? So, but that was the first thing that I did. So maybe in your case, if you've been doing velocity banking for a little minute and something bad happens, understand that your credit score may have just jumped. You could potentially have access to more credit line on a specific uh, line of credit that you're using, okay? So that was the first thing that I did. The second thing I did was I had, I'm someone that has a bunch of different credit cards simply because of the 0% promotions that these credit cards come with. Bank of America does them like crazy. Um, Chase does them. Capital One, I believe, does them. Citi definitely does them. Like, that's usually where the major banks do have a leg up, is, is those big offers that they, that they do, that the smaller credit unions don't do so much. Um, but that's pretty, uh, pretty good. So yeah, that's what I did. And I basically ran the expenses through the credit card and then I pulled from the line of credit to pay the credit cards, waited till I made some income. I always pay the line of credit first. Always, always, always. Okay? Always pay, like I always say, any and all income goes into that main line of credit that you're using first savings, a profit, funnel it, funnel it all through, and then make the transfer outward to pay everything else. If you lose your job, if you have problems in the business, if you go negative cash flow, then turn off velocity banking, no chunking, no chunking. You're just gonna go back to paying your minimums until you can realign, get yourself right again, and then go into it, okay? Let's see. I love this. Cool. Chasey Moses, smart, educated black man. America's number one nightmare. Are you referring to me? Because uh, I'm Latino. <laughs> uh, Timothy Walker from Phoenix, Arizona. I get excited about this just like the youngsters get excited about their own favorite entertainer. <laughs> I feel you, man. This gets me excited, man. I'm talking to, I'll be talking to mom and I'm like, I'm like jumping up and down. This is, this is how I am when I'm on the phone. Like when I'm, when I'm, when I'm talking to moms, I'm like, yeah. So look, 
take the income, dump it in the damn thing, pay your debts off, let's start the kingdom, let's get the conversation going, let's figure out your purpose in life and where you're going, let's learn how to give first and receive and praise the Lord and all that good stuff. You know, that's how I am. All right. Can you show how to use 7K in savings to pay off 7K in debt on a credit card with a 0% APR till July of 2019? Sure. That would be like a, a whole separate thing. I feel like you and I have been talking for a little bit in the comments. Um, are you one of my Patreons? Let's see. My credit union does 90% LTV for HELOC. D there you go. Boom. So it can be as low as 10% equity before you um, get approved for that HELOC. But the only thing is that it'll be a small HELOC. You're better off trying to go for a personal line of credit. You know, because the, the HELOCs, they take a little while to get approved. You know, they might have some closing fees, some different things associated with it. You know, you want to do your homework. Always do your homework. Before you apply for any line of credit, do your homework. Make sure that you watch my videos on how to get a personal line of credit, the questions to ask, write them all down, talk to the banker, build a rapport, get it going. Get it going. Okay, Visa LLC. What if you have no cash flow but you need to pay off by making minimum payments? Okay, yo, listen, Velocity Banking ain't for you, okay? If there's people out there, you know, negative cash flow, you know, you, you spend through your teeth. I'm not going to coach you on how to live a frugal life or be a minimalism type person. You know, that's, there's, there's, a, there's a blockage up here. If you think that it's wise to make an income and spend everything that you make, I, I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you. That stuff gets me so angry, you know, because I had to deal with it in my household for so many years, you know, and it's, it still happens today where, you know, the, the grown men, grown women, you make money and you spend it all. What the hell? What are you doing? It gets me so frustrated. Don't get me, don't get me upset. Let me, let me keep my joy, please. All right. Joel, great answer. That's exactly what I've been doing. You mentioned life insurance policy as a debt weapon how does that work or did i misunderstand all right i did videos on this before where i talk about pretty much velocity banking 2.0 all right which is imagine if you had a personal line of credit that you paid no interest on you can borrow from it at any time you never have to worry about uh, applying for an increase, you never have to worry about having the credit score for it, okay? That, my friend, is a cash value life insurance policy. It's literally a line of credit when designed properly, okay? When you design this cash value policy correctly, we can use it just like we do velocity banking with, but in this case, instead of using a life insurance policy to like pay little bills and whatnot, I want you to think a little bit higher in terms of using a life insurance policy to acquire real estate, to acquire land, to invest in a business or product, a service, okay? And then the profits that that service, product, land, investment would make, you would literally just pay yourself back what you used. In that process, that policy was earning interest tax-free. You use the money tax-free you paid yourself back tax-free, Uncle Sam is nowhere in your vicinity, and you create this really, really large line of credit over the course of so many years. Still have your credit cards, still have your lines of credit, your business line of credit, your HELOC, keep them, keep them, you know? But the whole point is with a policy, not only am I building something like a line of credit that's increasing every single year over and over again, but it's also providing me with this guaranteed increasing death benefit that I don't pay for. So what ends up happening is the life insurance becomes free, where you never have to 
put money in it again and it just functions functions very 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 good okay how to use a credit card step one don't get one <laughs> sorry about how do poor people stay poor is by getting credit on things they can't afford thank you I feel you on that all right uh, okay sorry so I am from Nicaragua Nicaragua okay you look african-american Mira, 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 mira. I don't know, man. <laughs> I got the curls. I don't know. Um, what Patreon should I go for to get your help for that question? 7K in savings. To Honestly, we can jump on a phone call at Tier 2 and just kind of lay that out for you. Because I feel like that's something that it's, it seems like a very specific question that you're getting ready to do. It's like... Because I have a lot of these questions with my tier three clients, which is like, all right, Denzel, I'm about to step into like 10,000 or 15,000 of, of a cash flow increase from my business or a tax return or I'm going to get money from mom and dad. Like I'm, I'm, I'm about to come into some cash. Is it wise to use that cash to just pay a bunch of debts or should I keep using my line of credit? Chunk in the debt, use the increase in cash flow to pay the line of credit, and then literally make a second chunk and start the process and get it going. So that was in a nutshell, but you know, we would need to go like a little bit deeper on that so I can give you specific numbers on how to place that 7K properly into the credit card, then using the credit card with the zero balance, I mean zero percent. APR because I'm sure we can go ahead and use like convenience checks or balance transfer to make that chunk to kill that debt that you're trying to look to do before the end of the year. All right. Denzel, let me re what I meant to say. Very minimal cash flow at this time. Could you please share a spreadsheet that can assist? By the way, love your show. Cool. Um, I'm very old school. I really don't like spreadsheets and whatnot. I just kind of write things down. Um, uh, it's simple. You make money. You have expenses. Okay. Turn off that lust to go buy things. All right. Turn off the lust to keep up with your neighbor next door. Turn off the lust to get a new car. Turn off the lust to buy a new home. Stay in the one you're in. Rent. Why are you trying to buy a home if you're fifty, hundred thousand dollars in debt already? I don't care what anyone tells you that a house is an investment or a house is an asset. You need to listen to my uncle, Grant Cardone. He'll get you right. All right. He'll change your whole perspective. A house is only an asset when the thing makes money. Cash flow. Not sitting equity doing nothing. It's not going to get me anywhere. All right. If you have 2,000 cash flow. Oh, yeah. Travis, let's go. If you have 2,000 cash flow, is it okay to just chunk straight out of your checking account? Or should you still use the debt weapon to get a better rate? debt weapon limit I don't know if I understand your question right if I have 2,000 cash flow should I chunk from the checking account oh help me out here what are you trying to say if I have a line of credit and a checking account by the way everyone you're not paying the bills from the line of credit. You still need a checking account. You need them linked, okay? You're gonna be making transfers and withdrawals from the line of credit, back and forth, back and forth. So you're still chunking from your checking account, but it's the money that we're using. I'm not using your cash. I'm using the bank's money first, and then I'm literally shifting the cash back to the line of credit, which gives me the ability to do it like this and just keep going. 
should you use a personal line of credit to build credit? Yeah. Yeah. Now, wherever you're at in life, if you're really young, like me, it's best to start off with the credit cards. Okay? If you're much older than me, and you've been around the game for a little while, and you got a home, and you got a car, and you got a this, and you got a that, get the line of credit, build your credit to get to the line of credit, to pay off all the amortization debts, the installment debts, it's going to boost your credit score and you get in a much better position. All right. Can you explain your tier system, tier one, cost, tier one, etc.? Okay. So tier one is 10 bucks a month. That's showing your support. You love what I do. You like the content. It's helped you. You've taken, you've took action with it. You've been on a Q&A with me before in the past. Um, that's what that's really primarily about. And what I was doing was like, like these private, like Google Hangouts or like these webinar calls with all my tier one people kind of just doing what I'm doing right now, like some Q&A, okay? Tier two, 47 bucks a month. Listen, there's no commitment. Give, receive, 47. We jump on a phone call together, one-on-one. -on -one. And you tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're at financially, it always helps to talk to someone, okay? And it's usually best when you talk to someone outside of the family because whatever, what happens most of the time is the people that you're surrounded around most of the time can be a contamination, all right? They don't understand where you're going. They only know who you are in the present. They don't know who you are in five years, in 10 years. I do, right? The person that wants to discover who you are, who you need to be once you know you get your money right, okay? Tier three is 147, same thing, month to month, no commitment, you can do it one time, you can do it, you can give for as long as you like. You can adjust, okay, you can work your way up. I got so many people that are at tier one right now and I love it. They, they're giving me so many updates. They're like, yo, I just got the line of credit. Uh, boom, jumping in tier two. We do a little conversation, another month goes by, and I see them in tier three. And I'm like, yes, let's go. You know? Um, so you can do it like that. You can start small, work your way up. I know everyone is different when it comes to your personal money. That's why I'm trying to uh, be available in different ways, however I can with the time that I have right now at such an early stage. Okay, so the 147, that's, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna talk for a much longer period of time. I'm gonna give you the full scope, how to do it, how to start, where to go, get the line of credit, everything that I say on the channel, it's just geared towards you, right? And there's literally four spots left. I gotta keep looking at my email, cause like, once a day, every day for the past whole month, literally been getting one new tier three person every single day for the past uh, three, four weeks. And so I only got, I only have four spots left there and that's where I throw the numbers on the board. That's where I go in finite detail. That's where, you know, you and I are just together, you know, I'm kind of like on call, All right? And that, that's only for the rest of this month. You know, after that, I'm not, I'm not doing any more of the videos because uh, the Lord placed a new vision on me where he wants me to go start speaking to different organizations. Uh, I really want to go to churches and bring this to the church because they need this. People that are in the faith, people think that money and spiritual is separate. You know, I need to, I need to, I need to redeem some of these people, restore their way of thinking. They've been contaminated so long, you know. So uh, that's where kind of God is steering me to go. So I try to tell people now, take action of this person right that's standing right in front of you. I want to give all day long. That's all I want to do. What's your contact info? I'd like to get you out to teach Velocity Banking to a group of young men in Miami. Re yeah, I'm just going gonna, gonna to type it. Check email email this okay reach out to me if you're serious you want me to, to talk to some young guys look I'm put I'm see I'm putting it out into the world and if this guy is serious
talking about me going to Miami to talk to some young men, whether they're teenagers or people my age. Oh my God. And then we're gonna record it, document it, throw it on the channel, and then on to the next one, okay? I'm not sure how the interest is calculated daily on a HELOC that you keep revolving money in and out. I thought I heard you say you pay no interest. Did I hear that right? Yes, you did, Andrew. Think about it. You have a HELOC, a home equity line of credit that's calculated simple interest. Simple. A simple. Okay? And then you have a mortgage. Let's just say, for example, you have a mortgage and it's amortized. All right? The interest that you're paying on that amortization debt is so large that when you take money from a simple interest debt to the amortized debt, you immediately save thousands of dollars on the back end of interest. That, my friend, is your cushion for the interest that you'll pay on the HELOC. To make that even better, what do we do? I take your income and I dump it in the line of credit. I take expenses out. I keep cash flow in. That cash flow that stays in along with the monthly payment on that debt, okay, along with all the other money that originally went in to the HELOC, you cut off interest from accruing, okay? When we're looking at simple interest, simple interest needs time to accrue, okay? It needs 30 days, just like your credit card, right? It takes 30 days, the interest accrues, you get the due date. If you don't pay the credit card in full, boom, the interest hits on the next bill. Same thing with the personal line of credit. I use the line of credit on the 1st of December. I have an outstanding balance for 10 days, 15 days, whatever it is. You only pay interest on what you use, okay, versus a home mortgage or a whole car note, you're paying interest on the whole damn debt. And that's why you see like neck and neck with interest and principal, okay? So that's why I say we, we look to offset the interest when doing velocity banking and then saving. And it's as if you're not paying any interest, which that's really what it is. You're not paying interest. All we did was shift it. And in the process of shifting it, I cut it off. Make sense? Hope that makes sense. Okay, let's see. Lynn, hello Lynn. All right, hi, my question is, can I use equity in my home to buy the whole life insurance? Okay, okay, we got someone that's thinking. I like it. Uh, my home is worth about 300K paid off. I'm looking to use Velocity Banking to help my business grow and utilizing, utilizing it to purchase realty. Realty, like more, more land. Other uh, question is, can I put 250,000 of equity to buy whole life insurance? Okay, name's Mac. Hey, Mac, how are you? All right, so let's, let's go over that. All right, the question is, because here, here's where it gets real fun. You know, once you've paid off debt, oh my God, there's so much stuff we can do together. I mean, we can, we can invest in a product. You know, we can go to another country and start teaching people and start doing some of evangelism and saving people. Oh my God. So look, he's got 300K in equity, right? House is paid off. So, so, so I'm assuming you have a HELOC, okay? Or you can at least get one for that amount. And the question is, can I go ahead and get my life insurance my life insuro policio all right 
got your income. You got the debt weapon, the line of credit, the HELOC, the whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to have your policy up here. All right. Here's how I figure the numbers out. For a few of them, um, I have a few clients that actually don't have any debt and they're working on getting their policy in order. And then there's also some people that don't, that do have debt, not a whole lot, but they're able to separate uh, some of their cash flow to pay off debt and then also acquire the policy. I did a video called Velocity Banking is a Lifestyle and then there's a part two to that video that talks about the infinite banking concept scenario number one where I go over a husband and wife paying off debt using velocity banking and then they're literally taking 10,000 a year and they're doing 5k 5k to fund both their policies all right so for you my friend Mac that 250,000 instead of trying to just shift all that money member you got to worry about that interest on that HELOC. I don't necessarily want to take all that equity all at once. I'd like to do it in what? Chunking, chunks, right? So we could mathematically set something up where we take a chunk from your property, right? To then fund the policy, the way we decide this number is the same way we decide when we're paying off debt. I take your cash flow monthly, I times it by 12, divide it by two. Every six months, you can make a chunk towards your policy, let's say. All right, you can do it that way. Or if you're like me with my own policy, I'm just doing it monthly until I can build more and more uh, cash flow to get me to that, that stage. Okay, um, but let's see. Yeah, when you're, when you're using a whole life insurance policy, the policy itself is not building credit, but what is building credit is you actually using the line of credit to fund the policy, all right? And here's what you would do, is we would take the income that you make after you've chunked, so let's just say with a three hundred thousand dollar HELOC, you know you can take maybe, maybe take ten percent of that. Thirty grand, okay. And you take thirty grand per year, over the course of a ten year, fifteen year period, let's say, and you dump it into insurance, right? And you just have that thing growing. Meanwhile, all the other equity you can put in another rental, right? another property. You can get a bunch of cheap properties out in Georgia area, right? Or um, along the East Coast, you know, in the rural areas, you get some nice cheap properties, some nice fixer-uppers, come down to Florida area where everyone's in foreclosure and, you know, acquire some good deals and see what you can do with that. You know, you build a team and you get that going, right? Meanwhile, any and all income is going into the line of credit, okay? You are creating cash flow and profits, okay? Everything goes here, right? And then we take a portion of your cash flow. So if you're cash flowing, let's say 30,000 a year, 50,000 a year, Whatever the number is, how I've worked out numbers for my clients is I take the yearly cash flow and I times it by 40%. And I say, look, we're going to save 40% of our money in a tax-free bank. The other 60% of your money is going to be made through activity income. Investing in real estate, investing in your business, focusing on your purpose in life, where you want to go, where you want to be. All right. Got eight minutes left before I cut off this live. So get your questions in. Get your questions in.
Could you explain again about using a debt weapon instead of using all of your savings? Where is the benefit? Hope it makes sense. Laura, check me out. Whenever you use your cash, let me get close. Whenever you, whenever you use your cash to pay something, that's it. It's gone. Does that make sense? It's gone. As soon as you use your cash from your savings to pay off a debt, that money is gone. You can't use it again. Okay? When we do velocity banking, I use the bank's money first. I put my savings back where I took the money from, and I can use that money again at any time. And it costs me very little to do so. Okay? Very little. Thanks for educating those like myself who are trying to improve our financial situation by showing us how. That's what it is, man. That's what it's about. I may not make anything from this, but what I do know is by me giving to kings, because I know there's some kings in this, in this crowd right here of the 91 people watching right now. Man, I got some, I know there's some kings. I know there's people that are already giving and there's people that are on the fence. They don't know whether to work with this young kid or not. They don't know if he's serious and that's okay. Over time, I know that if I continue to give and give and give, just like my boy Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, jab, 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 right hook, right? As long as I continue this, I know I'm going to help people like GYW010 and people like Laura and Stanley and Mac and Joel, right? And we're all going to get to the kingdom on time, on time. Ain't nobody going to get left behind. What's the point of that? Let's see. Can you make the phrase, leave the cash flow in the line of credit clearer? Mr. Finance, a guru. Yeah. Cash flow stays in the line of credit. Instead of the cash flow sitting in your checking account doing nothing or your savings account, you could be storing it in your line of credit, which would give you the ability to make your chunk at a faster rate. Was that clear? I hope so. I hope so. Um, is it advisable to get multiple personal lines of credit from credit unions? Sure, over time. In the beginning, focus on one thing. And that's with anything in life. Focus on one thing. Get married to one person. Start one business. Focus on that one purpose in life, and then that one thing will produce many things, right? One marriage produces many offspring, kids. One business produces many other businesses. One person, one purpose leads you to many other callings and assignments. I hope that's clear. Where can I find a good life insurance company? You got the four major mutuals, my friend. Okay, there are many wonderful, awesome, I'm sure, life insurance companies out there, right? There's hundreds of them. If you're looking to purchase life insurance for the death benefit, you're better off just acquiring a simple term life insurance policy, in my opinion. If you're just, again, again, if you're just looking to buy life insurance, okay, to protect yourself, you're better off acquiring a term, a cheap term life insurance policy. If you are looking at life insurance for the cash accumulation portion, for the legacy creation, the wealth creation, then you are better off going with a mutual life insurance company, the majors that credit the highest dividend rate, 
that have performed throughout history that have the financial strength, track record, and performance to back themselves up, okay? And then lastly, you need to find someone that you know, like, and trust. You need to find someone that you know, like, and trust that understands this concept of velocity banking very well, okay? That can take you step by step by step, and that's not going to take advantage of your uneducation. You're, you're not going to take advantage of the mind that doesn't know, okay? I'm a life insurance agent. I'm licensed. I have a team. We help people acquire their legacy policies. That's my focus. That's my core. That's why, the, that's why I add that portion into Velocity Banking. I think it's a very good tool to have in your portfolio, in your what? Your personal finances. By no means am I ever going to teach someone how to make money on this channel, right? I'm not going to do that. I'm simply teaching you how to manage your personal finances to get the foundation in line so that you can tell me what your purpose is. And then once we know our purpose, we don't need to learn how to make money. It's going to come naturally. Okay. You don't have to buy a crazy program or a system to help you make more money. You can focus on what you're good at that gets you to that stage. And then through personal relationships, we're like, yo, I got a way to create some profit, to create some income here. Take a look at it. Boom. You look at the deal. Bam. We do some work together. So I hope that's helped. Hope that is good. But yeah, back to the question of what are the good life insurance companies of the four majors. You've got Mass Mutual. You got Guardian. You got, oh my God, New York. New York Life and Northwestern Mutual. Okay, these are these are the top dogs. Okay. Mass Mutual and Guardian is typically uh, more effective with these designs. They have um, higher dividend rating and they're more flexible than your New York Life or Northwestern. But there's no question that New York Life, Northwestern have been around the game for quite some time, all right, and they know what they're doing. But uh, I personally have been writing and working with clients on Mass Mutual and Guardian mostly, uh, simply because of their current performance rating and how well they're doing. So that is something to be aware of. Let's see. Oh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go till 11.10 and then I'm gonna wrap up, all right? So let's see, how would you use a 50K solo 401k with the Velocity Banking Strategy? Very interesting, looking into that. I got one client that has a TSP kind of like what you're talking about. He borrowed about 40,000 from his TSP and he wiped out 40,000 of debt. He increased his cash flow by $1,200, right? And then through his paycheck, the, the loan that he took against the TSP, he's paying like six, $700 back to the loan that he took out. But see what happened is since he increased his cash flow by $1200, he actually netted a positive cash flow gain gain of like 5 to $700 on top of the cash flow that he already had. So that's the only time that I think that's really good to pull from like your 401k or TSP is only if it's calculated simple interest. All right? Only if it's calculated simple interest. Let's see. Um, I'm a future king. Thanks, bro. I know it. 
My company is called Kingdom Property Solutions. <laughs> nice. Nice. Freddy, 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 my man Freddy. How are you? Let me ask you. Freddy, we have been working together since the very beginning. How, what progress have you made? Okay. I have your video on like the front of my um the front of my channel because I thought that I thought that strategy was so clear. It's called velocity banking step by step. Step by step. Okay? Let's see. If you have a $5,000 line of credit, how can you put more than it in? What? If you have a $5,000 line of credit, how can you put more than in it? I don't know what you mean by that. But if using velocity banking on your savings is actually, it's actually going back to you, no? Question mark. If you're using velocity banking on your savings, no, 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 no. I'm using the savings to do velocity banking and the money comes back to me. Yes. Just think of your line of credit like your savings account that you can increase, you can create money out of thin air at any time by walking down to the bank and saying, hey, uh, give me more money. Thank you. Applied. Approved. Because your credit's amazing. That's it. Let's see. Oh, yes. Killing everything, man. It's working super. Yes. All right. Cool. Cool. I like it. I like it. Can you take money out of your life insurance policy and pay it back? Yes, that's the whole point. That is the whole point. That we want to be able to leverage the life insurance policy just like we would a line of credit to make an investment in something and pay no interest. Like literally, I want to offset my interest cost. There's no lost opportunity cost when borrowing from an insurance policy properly. Okay? It must be done properly. A lot of people don't know how to do it properly and then you get in problems. You don't want problems. Once I sign up for tier three, I'm on a month to month until I cancel. Correct. My goal is I want you to understand this concept and master it as fast as possible. As fast as possible. Okay? I want you to give because you love to give, not because you have to. That's called tithing. Tithing is like something you must do. It's like paying your taxes. Okay? But see, anything above your tithe is a give, is an offering. And when you give not grudgingly and not out of necessity, when you give from the heart, truly give from the heart, whatever you gave gets given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Come on, man. Come on. Is your cash flow, your money left after paying expenses? Yes, Dante, your cash flow or AKA money left over is that amount after all your bills and debts have been paid. Yes. Okay. Three minutes, three minutes left. Any other questions? I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to go hang out with my wonderful woman that I love very much. Okay. We're going to spend some quality time together. I'm going to pray for everyone that came that decided to watch all right any other questions let's go anything i can do put me to work buenas noches amigo have a wonderful evening have a wonderful evening god bless okay let's pray in spanish <laughs> i gotta learn I gotta learn. I'm gonna learn. Any other questions? All right, it's been a wonderful time hanging out with you. 
All right, cash flow goes in the account or left as a balance in the line of credit when you leave it. Cash flow goes in the account, yes. And the difference from what you originally chunked would be the, the balance owed. Okay, so yeah. What's your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution is, let's see. I really want to position myself to start uh, talking in my local area. I have to uh, have a meeting with a group of teachers because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be going to a um, another middle school very soon, teaching four classes. No, it's an elementary school actually, teaching four classes, probably like in the fourth and the fifth grade. So I want to get that done. I want to get my tax situation sorted out so I'm in the green light. I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, I want to pay off all my debt by June or sooner, become debt free by, by June or sooner. Okay. I'm projecting it's probably going to look around May ish. And then um, my birthday is on January 4th. And I would really like a classic King James Bible, okay? Like I want to learn all the thou and the hath and the thee and the, you know, like I really want to get into that. Um, I would love some material or books on kingdom authority, kingdom principles, kingdom citizenship, anything that has to do with establishing a kingdom, all right? And I want to get a... Uh, like a stand so I can have like the laptop like right here and I can be like a little, like a little teacher. Say, hey, how you doing? You know? Um, that's about it. That's my New Year's resolution. Let's see. Pray for you. All right, so for Visa and Raman, finance guru, uh, guys email me it's in the chat box okay I'll type it one more time reach out to me guys I got the patreon page visit the patreon page let's work together let's stop playing games and let's make some magic all right have a wonderful evening and God bless love you